quick reminder of what the point is of statistics. In frequentist statistics, classical statistics, you use that for decision making, and it is essentially the science of changing your mind. Every statistical hypothesis test in that philosophical framework is saying, does the evidence that we've collected make our null hypothesis look ridiculous, yes or no? So it is about changing our minds. It's about saying, here is what we have chosen to do by default. Here is what the world looks like when that's an okay thing to do. That's the null hypothesis. And then we ask, does the data make us want to change out of that or should we just keep doing what we're doing? Now that's the framing. And because our step involves describing what the world looks like where we are okay doing what we were going to do anyway, that world's the null hypothesis, because we have to describe it, we have to carefully state all these assumptions about it and say, what do we think we mean about this world? What does it look like? And how would we know if our evidence makes that world look ridiculous? And then we have to think that through. So it's an intensely philosophical pursuit. So this is about changing your mind. And you've completed all the steps figuring out what your mind is set to in step one. So I, I was kind of light about the amount of statistical setup that's actually part of the statistician plus decision maker effort that happens in that very first step. And now I'm going to talk about what should actually be in your document from step one. So these are the 12 steps of our statistical thinking course at Google, which is I think our most popular course, because uh, I guess they like the comedy hour for me really ranting about stuff. I'm totally chill in this one, by the way, compared to that one. That one's like where the anger comes out. <laughs> that one also has 12 steps, and the, I'm gonna give you just the quick summary. We spend from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. getting through them in the, uh, in the other course, but uh, you get it in a couple of minutes. So all this stuff from one through to 10 is already done before you get to this course's step nine. So what are we looking at? So first, I'm always surprised and slightly appalled to see that people use statistical inference, frequent statistical inference, without realizing that all of it hinges on the notion of a default action. That is actually the first thought you should have if you go near statistics. Philosophically, none of it makes sense without that object because we are trying to change our minds. We need to know what is our default, what are we going to do in the absence of further information or data. And if we are actually completely agnostic, we have no opinion, we also have no business using these techniques, just go with the best guess, otherwise known as the estimate. Because when we are doing these techniques, we're asking, is the evidence enough to change our minds? Is the estimate good enough? That notion of good enough doesn't make sense if our mind isn't set. So if you're totally agnostic, look at how the data have fallen out. Okay, it's on this side of the bar, off we go. The complicated stuff makes sense when you already have a preference. Now in machine learning, what would your preference be? Launch it or don't launch it? Well, that's up to the decision maker. Be honest with yourselves. If your preference by default is launch the thing and you have to be talked out of launching it, that's a very different analysis. But I think it's usually safer to be on the side of how about don't launch it by default unless we can be talked out of it by the evidence. So we will err on the side of if we're ignorant, we won't release this thing on the world. Let's see if the evidence changes our mind. Operationalization is what I did force you to do in step one. This is saying what our words mean, designing our metrics, where we stop using fuzzy words like happiness and we hammer them down to when we say user happiness, we are referring to the propensity to click four or five stars on a survey. We understand that this is not happiness. But when we say happiness, that is what we mean. Okay, that's the social science thing of operationalization. So when you design the metric, the performance metric, that is what you were doing. Three, population. Which world are you wanting to succeed in? And therefore, which world does your testing apply to? Are you asking about succeeding on 
all users you see on Tuesdays ever? Are you asking about the users you expect to see next quarter, the users that are from Africa? What is the population that you wish to draw your conclusions about? And so in that, you answer that by thinking about where the system needs to operate, where it needs to succeed, where it's important that it doesn't mess up. Simulation, this is an optional step where you're going to go and make some pretend data and try out statistical testing methods and see if the data required by those methods is actually available to you. Do you need to change your logging? And uh, that is also the point when you can bake in the story that you think you have, like, I have a great system, here's its performance, cat, cat, not cat, etc. Can I recover that story? Do I get the right result from my statistical test? That's optional, but in the really complex testing situations, uh, statisticians will tend to do it. Your data strategy. All this has even happened before you've thought about your data ingredients. So going to step two, how are we collecting them? Or if the data is already collected, what's the history of that? Let's look at some of those data pipelines. Were there any bugs? Uh, is anything wrong with it? How are we going to get the data um, about the population that we're interested in? Then, assumptions, assumptions, assumptions. The decision maker has to lay out all the assumptions, not just the mathematical assumptions, but assumptions like our logging works, or all the users that we're seeing here are actually all our users, and there is no kind of thing that's missing a whole component of them accidentally that we don't even know about. Hypotheses. This is translating a combination of your criteria and your default action into statistical language. You're saying, under what circumstance are you happy to keep doing what you're doing? And what does the opposite world look like? And you're saying that mathematically. Method selection which statistical methods are appropriate, and maybe a statistician has to stitch that together for you. Luckily, in a machine learning setting, typically, the statistical testing is actually pretty easy. Output versus output tends to be an, an easy sort of test. You don't have to take into account the fact that it came from a neural network. You just have to compare, hey, how many not cats versus cat situations did we get right? Power analysis, what on earth is that thing? Do we have enough data to even come to conclusions? How much data would it take? And code review. Make sure someone's looked at the code because you want to take this decision seriously. Data collection. If your data wasn't collected before, now you execute your data collection strategy. All right. All this other machine learning stuff happens. Testing. You run the test, you run the code, and you report the result. Now, what comes out of that code? might be something like a p-value or a confidence interval. 